Alright, so welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, we're trying to do a simple data science project which is going to be cluster analysis, right? So cluster analysis is a form of unsupervised machine learning in which you have a data set without labels. Apologies for the noise to be hearing behind. It has been quite a long time since we did a video. So because I've been moving around quite a lot. So let's see what we're doing. So this is our task. Our task is that we want to identify the various levels of income for buyers of jewel, right? So as you already know, this is from the balance.com. We have these three forms. We have the low income, middle class, upper middle class, high income. So we have a data set and we want to be able to group the incomes based on these particular levels. So let's see how to work with it. So we'll not be using, there are two ways. We can just create a function to sort them out or we can just use cluster analysis to help us with that so let's see how to do that i'm just going to load my data set so dfpd.read underscore csv and i'm going to pass in my data url right so this is coming from this data set is coming from this url for my github and now let's check the data set if i check it out we can see that we have this particular data set so we have the age, we have the income, we have the, let make it bigger, we have the age, we have the income, and then we have the spending and the savings. So this particular, based on this data set, we can do regression, right? Linear regression or regression, because it is a, in case we want to predict the savings. But what we want to do is that we want to pick the income, right? And then group the entire data set per the income, right? So this is cluster analysis. We want to find the different clusters within this particular income. So let's go back and see how to do that. So let's check for the shape of this set. And then if I check it, we have about 505, 500, right, 500. And now let's do some simple descriptive analysis. So this is going to be very simple. So df.describe. And then let's move on. So let's check Based on it, we have that we have the mean income that's about 75,000. If that is 75,000, so if I go back and I check, 75,000 is going to be between this particular range, right? That is middle class, so that means that the mean is middle class. And then if I go back again, the that is the minimum is 12,000, so 12,000 here is yeah, 12,000 is even below low income. <laughs> wow, that is quite interesting. And we have Maximum as 142,000, which is within high income, right? So, so that is what you have gotten so far from the descriptive analysis. Now let's move on and see, do some simple plot. We need to do some data visualization. So the simplest one is that we will want to visualize the using scatter plot to give us an idea of how the data is distributed, right? So we using scatter plot to help us with that. So the simple one is just create this option. So you can just go plt dot figure figure size. I'm going to pass in the figure size. It's going to be let's make it 20, 10 to make it bigger for us to see. When I'm using seaborn, I'm going to go with my scatter plot to help us specialize it. So it's going to be scatter plot. I'm going to pass in my data, which is my df, and then the s is going to be the income because that's what you're trying to find out. And then this y is going to be the savings. Right? So we are not going to put in any colors because for now we don't know. It. We just want to see how the data set is, right? If we can see some clustering around, right? So it's giving us this error. So let's see. So the reason it's giving us this error is that it's telling us that, let's go back, cannot interpret value income for parameter s. So the reason is that here, the income is capital, right? And then the savings is capital. So we have to make sure that it's certain with capital later. That's why it's filled. So let's go back again. And then if I print it out, I go to see how the data is like. So based on this, you can see that we have about four different classes. We have one here. We have one here, we have one here, we have one here, right? So we have about four different clusters, right? Just by plotting it using scatter plot. So the income we can see from this data that we have four different clusters, right? Perfect. Now let's actually use machine learning, not just visualization, 
but let's use our supervised machine learning to be able to identify the different clusters. So how do we do that? So this is going to be my cluster analysis. So cluster analysis. In this case, we are using k-means. So, so we can use k-means to help you to do cluster analysis because k-means is part of clustering and a scikit length. So it's going to be very simple. So from skln dot clusters import k-means, right? And then we can also import the other ones, but let's just keep it here. Right, so it's cluster, not clusters, right? Very nice. Now let's get all our features. So the feature is going to be my S feature. So based on our data set that we had, if I check it out, we have the income and then the age. So we want to use age, income, and spending score to help us get our features. Right, so that's going to be our features. So let's go, that's my idea of the columns to get it. So I'll just copy this. This is a simple for me. I'll copy this one here. So this is going to be my S features. It's going to be my DF. Yeah. So this is going to help us get all the features as one, right? Perfect. This is going to be my features. So let's first of all build our model. This is going to be our model. So I'll call this my model. And I'm just call this K-means. Then I'm using K-means. So it also requires the number of clusters. So the number of clusters based on what you have seen, right? You have seen from here that we have one, two, three, four, right? So just by data visualization, I think that we have four different clusters. So we can actually put them here. So let's put it as number four, right? Perfect, that is it. Now let's fit it on our data set to train. So we're going to fit to train. So it's going to be my model, right? Dot fit. I'm going to pass in all the features. You can split it and work on it, but let's fit it on it, right? Because there are no labels. Now we have built our model. So in case I want to actually see the different classes within them, I can just go back with my prediction. Prediction is going to be my model dot predict. I'm going to pass in the features again. And now, in case I want to see it, I can just do it this option. So this is going to be the result. So I want to compare them together. So I can just simply go with this option. So df clusters. Right, so this is going to be the clusters for the different levels of income. Then I can just go with this my period. Right? So if I come back here and I check it out, so df dot head. So I see that we have one column for the income around for the clusters right so let's compare the income and the clusters together this is going to be my df let's compare the income and then the clusters if i go back with this you can see that this is it right so you, you can see from here 70, 77,000 and are all within the same cluster as you can see from here based on this to so 77 and then they are all within here right the same middle class right so that is why we had it here so that means that our model is able to do some very good work so let's visualize it's always important to visualize so let's get the class distribution or the class distribution so in this case this is also class distribution because we have gotten the clusters already so now we have labeled them right? Of income, so simply just go with C bond. So CS count plot, and I can just pass in my X. S is going to be my clusters, and then my data is going to be my DF. Right, so this clusters here is coming from this clusters here, right? So you have an idea of it. So let's plot it. We plot it, you are not going to see the distribution. But we see that now we have four different so we have the zero one two three right very nice so you can see that there are more people in the two and as you can see the two is mostly within the middle class right two is like yeah hopefully let's see that is it upper middle class 
but that is one so now let's visualize it so we have four different maps so in case i also want to visualize it i can just come back again and then use the same plot we use for the scatter plot you want to add the color to it so we just copy the same thing that we had and now we can now plot them so let's plot them yep and the next option is i'm going to pass in the hue which is going to be the clusters right perfect and so let me give it the title so uh, let's give it the title plt dot title call this is going to be yeah So now let's plot it and now we can see that we have based on what we have the same thing we did you can see that we have <laughs> very interesting you can see that based on what we have done so far we have the one cluster here one cluster here one cluster here and there is some difference you can see that there's a difference here so some of these things here there is a demarcation between this one and this one right that is something interesting so by default when we plotted these ones we saw that we had four right but if when we did the cluster analysis using our supervised machine and using k-means we found out that there is a split a slight difference between this ones and these ones right that is why the pictures give us this option here right you can see from here that we have one cluster here another cluster with the same color another cluster and then there is another demarcation so that means that in in effect it is not just four clusters like five clusters just like we had here right so one two three four right and then there's another cluster there is or another group that is how to use cluster analysis to be able to split or get the different levels of income for people right very cool and very nice so the basic idea is that first of all we just got our features together we created our k-means cluster right and i picked a cluster of four and then we just fit it on data set to train and then we just predicted it and then we plotted them out right. so you have seen how to use as far as machine learning cluster analysis to be able to get the income levels within a particular data set very cool right okay so now you have seen that we use four clusters that's why we had but what if you want to know the best number of clusters right the best number of clusters to use so it's going to be identifying Oh, let's call it not the best, but the optimal number of clusters to use, right? So how do you do that, right? So there are several ways. So the first method is I can use the elbow method, right? Elbow method. You can also use the silhouette, silhouette score, right? And then the method or plot, so so plot. So you can use any of them. There are several of them, but this is one of the ways you can do. So let's first try with the elbow method, and then you can just see if it is okay, right? You can also use a slow weight score too. So you can also try that one out. So let's check it out. Do the same thing. So let's go to a sum of squares, distance, put them inside a variable, or a, a list. Then let's give it a range. So we want to check for how many clusters you can have. So one, two, let's make it ten. Yeah. Ten is okay. Then say for k in k range. Let's give it my model. So km k means model. Which is going to be my k means that I have. And I'm going to pass in the number of clusters as the k. Right. So that it loops through it. Then I'm going to fit it. So k means k means model fit on the data set that we have and then whatever result you're going to get you're going to put it back into the sum of square distance dot append so what are we appending we are going to be appending the inertia right so model dot inertia perfect so that is it so now let's run it so it's going to give us an error but we will still work on some warning it's giving us an error. So the reason it's giving us this error is that I spelled the k means wrong. So put k means like this. So exception error, exception error, but it's still going to work anyway. No worry, it is because of my Python version. So that's finished. If I go back and I check the sum of 
squares distance you can see that it's having some values there right so these are the inertia that we can plot to find the optimal number of classes we should use so let's plot it so how do you plot this one out? so you can just use plot plot dot plot so let me paste it to save us time and then we can plot it you can see that from this simple plot the elbow plot you have the elbow is just like an elbow like the place with the elbow is where we are talking about so based on this you can see that there is an elbow here there is another elbow here and this is another elbow here so we can just pick three as the optimal elbow we can just use four right two is okay but it's too steep but this is more like an elbow where your elbow is right yeah so this either we pick three or we pick four so based on this simple analysis of the elbow plot we can see that we can just pick the optimal key to be three or four right so middle income high income and low income or we can make it like a uh, lower income upper middle 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 income upper middle and then high class right as you wish that is one method now I'm so use a slowest score write some narrative so for the elbow method the elbow right that bend the elbow or the bend can be seen at three and then a little bit four but more obvious right it's more obvious you can easily see it at three so you can just have three clusters right so hence it's optimal so that's the basic understanding because we can see it's very obvious here here is okay but it's still not steep but here it's okay and then here is we yeah, know that we're obvious that's the basic understanding using the elbow motor so thank you for watching this tutorial in case you have any question or contribution you can put inside the comment section below so we have seen how to use two methods we have seen how to use just by visualization using scatter plot to see the number of the different distribution of the income within our data set we have also seen how to use k-means clustering right to be able to identify the different number of or different levels of income within our data set here we have used it to give it a label so thank you for watching see you another time stay blessed bye please don't forget to check the links below for some interesting materials to must help you master machine learning and then python i also have some new courses you can also check it out see you bye